Well, hello. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Rabbi Lieberman. Um, so this week's blog is entitled, Not My Finest Moment, sort of. Um, some of you guys have already heard this story, but I had to attend a wedding um, about a week and a half ago out in Palm Desert. Uh, the wedding itself was interesting. It was uh, one of these situations where the couple had originally planned on getting married right in the middle of COVID, and then they ended up having to postpone it until now. Uh, they had subsequently gotten married in a civil ceremony, but they still wanted to go through this process. So we kind of got roped into going to this somewhat you know, a dramatic wedding, for lack of a better term. It happened to be a Jewish wedding, which in and of itself was somewhat interesting, if only from the standpoint that Sandy had never been to a true Jewish wedding before. I didn't realize this until we were actually there. The wedding that Sandy and I had gone through in uh, in Las Vegas, lo these many years ago, was, uh, well, just suffice to say it was a hybrid type Jewish wedding lasting a robust 10 minutes. Uh, but we're still together, so that says something. Um, that notwithstanding, she, you know, found it fascinating and it was interesting. We then went to the reception and that's where things got interesting. We were seated at a table with a, a family that was from Santa Monica. The father of the family was probably in his late 60s, maybe mid 60s. Um, a business owner, and uh, we started talking, and he asked me what I did for a living, so I told him. This set off a string of events. Now, you may remember that in one of my previous blogs, I talked about professionalism at arms, and not simply being relegated to when we're carrying our firearm, or how we, you know, manipulate our firearm, or anything like that. That professionalism at arms has to do with maturity. It has to do with stoicism. You know, ultimately speaking, when it comes to a stoic philosophy, we come to the realization that we cannot control the beliefs of other human beings. What we can do is control our own responses to those beliefs. Um, so, you know, I always talk about avoiding conflict and everything else. And that by engaging in a conversation with somebody who is, you know, putatively anti-gun, we should see it as an opportunity, not one to simply pontificate on our own belief system, but rather one where we can educate someone and potentially even bring them into the Second Amendment community. And this isn't done by being aggressive or irate or, you know, trying to shove facts down the, uh, the other person's throat. It's actually done more by listening, by being an active participant in this conversation. So I had admonished all of you that this was an absolutely necessary thing. Uh, and then I completely blew it. When we were sitting at that table, um, he, you know, like I said, he asked me what I did for a living. I told him. And then he proceeded to say, you're probably one of those guys who thinks Rittenhouse should have been acquitted. And that's when I lost my shit, okay? I just completely exploded on this guy. And for the next 45 minutes, I utterly shamed him. Every time he attempted to speak, I slammed him down with facts that were completely contrary to his worldview. At the end of the entire thing, I had effectively humiliated him in front of his entire family. Um, again, not something that I would advise people to do. Quite the opposite. It was utterly embarrassing from my standpoint. I should never have done it. But in the final analysis, it felt really, really good. In any event, I hope you enjoy the blog and my little Mia culpa. Um, as always, I want you to train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, train with purpose, and above all else, stay safe.